Hi, I'm Sarah Claussen and I'm the Controls Product Manager for ETC and I'm here to introduce the Element console to you. Element comes in two different forms, the Element 60 which we have here or the Element 40 which has two rows of faders instead of three. Both consoles support 250 or 500 control channels and can patch up to 1024 addresses or two universes. Each console is exactly the same size here, so not, one's not bigger than the other. And we're just gonna walk through the basic functions of the desk and give you an idea of who it's designed for. So basically, Element is designed for smaller venues that have mainly conventional lighting rigs. So if you look at this face panel, you'll notice that we have faders, we have a command keypad, but we don't have any encoders or LCD displays that would be used in a more moving light oriented console. Um, but we'll talk about how you can control moving lights with Element later on. Basically, what this is designed to do is to come out of the box, plug into the wall, and get you turning lights on really quickly. And the way that we do that is when you start up your system, we start with what's called a one-to-one -one patch, which means that every channel is patched to a single dimmer or single address in your system. And the first 120 channels can be controlled through the faders themselves. And very simply, you just bring a fader up, and that brings up the corresponding channel. And you see those levels here on screen, and you'll also see them on screen in these fader bars at the bottom of screen too. And voila, dimmers are coming up. You can also use your command keypad. So I can just simply type one through 10, full, enter. And now I have the first 10 channels at full output. And those are also available to me now on my level wheel. So it's pretty fast when you get going. And we've designed it to be simple for those small venues with mainly dimmers to control. One of the things that those venues usually like to know is how much help can I get in running the desk or learning how to use this command keypad here? And the way that we do that is through a number of features. One is the command prompts above the command line. Those will basically follow your typing and give you a hint as to what the console expects you to do next. So if I clear the line, it's gonna say select channel numbers. So if I type one, it says channel one already right there on the command line. As soon as I hit at, the next thing that the console expects me to do is to enter an intensity level and then press enter. So if I say 75, enter, I've just set channel one to an output level of 75%. So that's one way that we help you to get comfortable with the system. The other thing is to have a help system in the desk. So basically all I have to do is hit the help key and press the go button and it tells me right on screen what the go button does and in some cases how I might use that key. The other thing we can do is we invite you to join our online community forums at our website, www.etcconnect.com, where you can ask questions and get answers basically from users all around the world um, using our Element or ION or EOS consoles. And they're very helpful a lot, so I welcome you to join us in our forums. So that's the very basic stuff. Lights on easy, command keypad, level wheel, help system. Once you get those levels onto your stage, you might wanna record them somewhere so that you can play them back easily. And the way we do that is very simple again. If you just want to put that look onto a single fader, simply record, hit a bump button on a submaster fader, and then I can go to a blackout here, like magic, and bring that look back up on a submaster fader. So the Element 60 console gives you 20 faders that are always submasters. These top two rows can operate in the channels mode, which is what it is when you take it out of the box. And then we have this posi four position switch, which allows you to page those 40 faders from channels one through 40 to 41 through 80 to 81 through 120, and then ultimately down into submaster mode where we get 60 submaster faders all at one time. And then I can just flip back to channel mode just that easily. If I have an element 40 console, it's like having these two rows. So if I wanna to get to my submasters, I just flip the switch to submaster mode and then those 40 faders become available to me as submasters. And then I can flip back and have my channel control again. So it's quite simple. If I like this look, but I prefer instead of bringing up faders to play them back, I wanna play them back with crossfade timing, that would be writing cues, and that's what that go button's for. So I already wrote some cues before, so we'd have something to look at. 
But if I want to record this look that we have here into my cue list, it's very simple. I already have seven cues. I'll just say record eight, enter. And now this look has been recorded into my cue list so I can play it back with a timed fade. Very simply, we'll go back to the top of my list, go to cue one, enter. And that will fade me back to where my show starts. And then my go button can be used very simply to start those fades happening one after the other using the timing that's been recorded on each of those cues. So Element is designed to get your show going relatively fast. What we haven't talked about is what happens if you've added conventional motorized accessories, LED fixtures, or a small number of moving lights to your rig. Element does have tools on board that you can use to control those things. And what we call them is the on-demand moving light controls. So I've already patched in some moving lights. So I'll select one now, it's at channel 201. So 201, enter. And you'll notice that my screen has changed. Now I can see all of the different things that channel 201 can do. Channel 201 is one moving light. Channel 202 is another moving light. So if you're familiar with our older consoles, a 20 channel fixture would actually take 20 control channels. In Element, as with ION and EOS, each individual channel can contain all of those different parameters that a moving light has. So I just have one light selected. And then when I push the ML control button, on my screen appears all the controls that I need to control that type of fixture. And in this case, it's a simple wash light. So what you see here is a focus control for pan and tilt, color controls over here, and actually off the side of the screen, as indicated by this arrow on the side, there are more controls for beam functions like you know, beam size or frost, that sort of thing. So if I want to be able to see those controls at the other end, I can either hit that arrow to just scroll all of the controls over, or I can shrink color, for instance, and open up the other category and see what's there. So basically within this area of your screen, you can get all of the controls for those moving lights right in front of you. Every parameter of the light is on a vertical encoder, and these are designed to be used with a touch screen or a mouse. And it's very simple. You click and hold, and the encoder will move. And the farther away from the center line that you click, the faster the encoder is going to move. The closer you are to the center line that you click, the slower it's going to move. So you can have some coarse and fine control that way. For pan and tilt, if you notice the crosshair over here, that's showing us absolute pan and tilt information. So my tilt line is on the ver vertical axis, and my pan line here is on the horizontal axis. And I can, in fact, just click and drag that fixture around the stage using that crosshair. Or I can adjust pan and tilt individually. Every single category and parameter has a little home key. It looks like a house. Yes, I know, cute. Um, and so if I hit that key, that will take my pan and tilt, for instance, back to the 50-50 position. We'll close that one up and talk about color, because color is more fun. So Element has a color picker. In this case, the black line that you see is a representation of the color space of the fixture I have selected. So it kind of knows what kind of colors this fixture can make. And I can just pick a color by clicking within that space. And then the fixture itself is going to be set to those color values. Or I have encoders, so I can manipulate those parameters individually if I want. This fixture also has a color wheel. And when you have a color wheel or a gel scroller, what you'll see is little color tiles and a text name for which color is in which frame of that wheel. So if I home my color that way and I want to send it to the red filter as opposed to mixing a red, I can just click that button and it goes. So those are the basics of the moving light controls. And yes, it does require either a touchscreen or a mouse. Um, we have a touchscreen here, but it could just be a regular monitor with an attached USB mouse, perfectly fine. If you like to use a trackball to control pan and tilt, for instance, on things like IQs, you can connect up a trackball. And when you're in focus, there's a trackball button there. And that will take control off of the mouse and onto the trackball for pan and tilt. And then you can go back to pointer control later on. So everything you need is pretty much in there. Additionally, these buttons at the bottom can be used to record what are called palettes. You have four different types, intensity, focus, color, and beam. And you can think of those as favorite positions. Once you get the light set somewhere that you like and you want to be able to recall that quickly, you can record it to one of those buttons so that instead of having to recreate it, you just select the lights, 
push the button, and the lights go right back to that spot. And if you don't have moving lights, and you're never going to get moving lights, if you don't push that button, you'll never see those tools. <laughs> so this is just a really quick overview of what Element is and what it does, um, and some of the tools that it offers for you. Element ships with a user manual, and it also ships with video tutorials that will walk you through the basics of getting your show going, including how to patch, how to write your cues, how to write submasters, etc. But if you'd like to see more, um, you can feel free to download the Element Offline Editor, or I highly recommend you contact your ETC dealer and schedule a demo. And that's Element.